So today I'm going to tell you a little story about earlier this year I had a, a problem and the problem was is how do I operate 40 of these nodes that are all remote all over the world in a way where I don't bring down entire systems, I can take down pieces of it, I can restart it, knowing that, for example, deployment is gonna have multiple steps in it. Some of those steps, in our cases, for name servers, are gonna withdraw any cast routes and things like that. So I could use SSH, and in fact, the first way, that's exactly what we were doing. But SSH is tedious when you're trying to take down four, eight, 16 nodes at a time and do things in parallel, or I can use Go Remote Control. So basically, uh, I used Go in anger in this case. I was frustrated at not having a solution that would actually let me do what I needed to do. And so I built something very small and very simple that solved our particular problem. Uh, so the idea behind it is on each node, we have a little Go service that's actually a little web service running on some alternate port. We open up a hole for it. And we can use that service only to execute very specific commands. So start, stop, restart, and deploy. Those might be the commands. And, but those commands can actually be other things underneath. I'll show that in just a second. So the way we do it is we control all of our ops from Hubot inside of our chat room. And Hubot basically just calls, we talk to Hubot and it calls out to an HTTPS endpoint and does what it needs to do. On the box, go invoke scripts that we've set up. So the script can be anything from a simple stop this service or it might be stop service X, stop service Y. If service Y didn't stop, then consider that a failure. So it can actually have logic out on this machine. Now these nodes are all the same, essentially running the same software, so it's the same script, but we can do a little bit more complex logic. But again, they're only very, very specific commands. It's not like we open up that box to anyone to come in and do any command. It's very, very specific. So here might be an example of the workflow. I'm on my bot, I say, okay, deploy name server SRV1 in IAD. So that's a serve one side. That's an entire side of, of a cluster. So it's, in this case, it's four, four nodes. Uh, so I get back a response. Hubot says, okay, I'm executing all of these. That was actually four separate HTTP calls, one to each of those nodes. And the Go stuff is running now in that system. And it's waiting. So we're blocking on this because it's not like we have a lot of, of these connections coming in. We don't really care about lots of concurrent throughput. All it cares about is I'm sitting there and I'm running something. So then the result comes back and it says, okay, I did a bunch of things. In our case, I stop exit BGP for the routing, I stop a client, I do something else. So it's, doing, it's telling us I did all of these things. And then it goes through and it does the, the update, for example, in this case, restarts everything up, takes the, puts the service back into a monitoring uh, service as well so we can make sure that we get notified if it goes down, and that's it. And I can do that with one command from our bot, which simplifies things greatly for us. So this is a little bit of coffee script code that we use inside the bot to make things work. Um, all the slides will be public afterwards, but it's pretty straightforward. It just does the HTTP action that we need it to do. Uh, this is how the robot does it. It says, oh, I, I handle this particular deploy command. Um, this is a bit of Ruby. You don't really care, but the point is it's more of a complex script. This is the script to do a deploy. Um, and it can actually depend on other scripts as well, the stop, start, and status script. But we can build up these, these really useful little scripts to do these very specific commands. And it's nice because it just, it makes it really easy to manage a bunch of nodes. And once we've set it up, I never worry about making a mistake while I'm out on that box. So for example, I don't worry that I didn't take it out of the monitoring node and we're gonna get a bunch of alerts. So I've open sourced this. It's available right now on Atrium, Go Remote Control. It's, it's stupid simple. All right, but the idea behind it, I think, is one that, is, that merits a little bit more exploration. So please feel free to go take a look. Um, and this is where, I don't remember what I put up here. I think I put the code up here as well on the gist. The slides are gonna be up later anyway, so no worries. Uh, thank you very much, that's it. Yeah.